a plan has begun to form. A couple weeks ago, we had a discussion about what's the plan with this boat? What exactly is the process going forward to put this boat back together? What comes first? What comes second? And so on down the line. After that discussion, began to kind of come up with a concept of how I'm going to plan putting this boat back together. The big list I made on the big board really helped. It kind of laid everything out, all the things we have to do to put the boat back together. And it allowed me to start categorizing things based on groups such as electrical, plumbing, exterior, interior, finishing. All of these categories now have a list of projects that need to be completed. I took the master list from the big board and I put it into a spreadsheet. I began to color code things based on the category of the projects that needed to be done. From that list, I was able to develop kind of a numerical sequence of what needs to be done in what order. Now this list, when you see it, it has just general titles. It doesn't talk about all the steps that make up each project. This is just so that I can remember, okay, when you do this project, it's gonna be before this other item that has to be done. Each one of these tasks have multiple dozens, tens of dozens of steps that have to be done in order for the project to be completed successfully. And we'll talk about them as I engage the projects. Now there will be some projects that will be so large and so complicated that there'll be multiple videos explaining what's going on. One of the things I like to do is show a project from the beginning to a moment of completion or at least show you the steps along the way. Every couple of months I'll do another planning video an episode where I talk about what the plan is for the boat and what I'm working on now and what's coming in the future. This will help me have a really good idea of what it is I'm supposed to be doing on a daily basis. And I think it will also be helpful to you, the viewers, because you'll have an idea of what's he doing right now and what's coming up in the future. I know at times on a project this big, it seems like nothing's happening or what am I doing other than chasing around the octopus? But trust me, there are always projects going on inside the shop. Some are big ones, some are small ones. So here we are in October 2022. And currently, I have a short list of a few projects I have to get done before we enter into the winter season. Top of the list right now is trying to touch up the paint on the deck of the boat. I wouldn't normally undertake this type of project. I'd save it till the end. But I need to have the deck touched up in a few places in order to mount the remaining stainless steel handrails that I have for the boat. I wouldn't normally deal with the stainless steel handrails, but there are a couple locations on the boat when I'm climbing around on top of it that it sure would come in handy to have a handrail to hold onto. In particular, on the forward deck right behind me. I've got two handrails that need to be mounted there and another two on the cabin pilot house and these will help in my safety getting in and out of the boat. So I gotta get the paint done, and then I gotta get the handrails mounted. I've got more paint that needs to be done along here, the edge of what used to be the rub rail. The red paint on the bottom, and more white paint on the top, right at the tow rail. The reason I need to get that painting done is so that I can reinstall the rub rail. I have brand new rub rail, which is gonna go all the way around the boat. It's quite a bit beefier than the old product that was on the boat. I think it's really gonna look good. The third project I'm hoping to get done is to mount the swim platform. You can see it on the wall behind me, hanging up high. I need to mount that to the stern of the boat on the transom. One of the projects I've been wanting to get done on the boat is to reinstall the rubbing strakes. This is what we call a rub rail. A rubbing strake are low down on the aft quarter of the boat on each side. Rubbing strakes were originally pieces of teak that were approximately six feet long. I'm gonna be reinstalling a D-section rubber molding that's quite a bit beefier and should really protect the stern quarter of the boat. To do this installation, I've got to install backing plates on the inside of the boat 
in the aft cabin lockers. And then I'll be able to through bolt the new rubbing strakes onto the hull. All this needs to be done before I start getting in there, putting in water lines and electrical and everything else. The aft cabin of the Albin 27 has an open area that goes all the way into the lazarette in the cockpit storage areas. I would like to have a bulkhead on each side for each lazarette, basically enclosing the aft cabin. I have one pattern made for one side of the boat. Now I need to make the other and I need to ensure that they fit properly. I've got another great project that involves the forward cabin of the boat. In the forward cabin of the boat, right at the peak of the boat, up near the chain locker, I want to install some storage lockers for clothing underneath the eaves of the cabin top. I've constructed some cabin shells that will fit inside there perfectly. I'll show you how I built those and we'll talk about using PVC foam board for construction on a boat. Now, this is not the PVC foam board you're thinking of that you use for your kids' arts and crafts projects. PVC foam board is a very dense, closed cell, hard, rigid foam board. It's fantastic for certain types of marine construction, like making little cabinets and little boxes and things like that. And finally, I have some final painting that needs to be done in the head, on the head bulkhead, in the forward cabin bulkhead, and in the aft cabin. I need to paint these areas because once I start putting in the electrical lines and plumbing, well, I don't wanna to have to paint again. I wanna have everything done before that. In the big picture of things, once I get these projects done, I'm gonna start by putting in the main electrical lines and also the main plumbing lines. At this point, I may as well also install a couple of the large tanks. We'll probably leave the big fuel tank out so that I have room to crawl up underneath the cockpit. So that's the plan. It's a short episode, but I think everyone now has an idea of what I'm working on and where I'll be going moving forward. You can expect one of these videos every couple of months or so, and we'll call it a planning video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you don't have a YouTube account, but you'd still like to ask a question, please navigate to the Motor City Boat Works website or on my YouTube channel description. This week's question comes from Miss Isa Gonzalez from Pachuco, Mexico. And Miss Gonzalez would like to know, I hear you referring to your trawler as a pocket trawler. What exactly is a pocket trawler? This is a good question. I probably should have explained at some point. A pocket trawler is a trawler you can fit in your pocket. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.